today we'll talk about thermochemistry. And this is just a simple concept. When you go to 12, you will have um, more in depth about the thermochemistry or thermodynamics. So thermochemistry will take just a small tiny concept. It's not really in depth, but at least you will have. So <clears throat> we have to know that we have two types of energy, potential and kinetic. So all the time, the, the, the energy is made of potential energy and kinetic energy. And they are, um, they are interrelated to each other. They converted one for kinetic can be converted to potential. Potential can be to, um, to kinetic and so and vice versa. For example, if I have a marker here, this marker is at rest, it's not moving. So it does not have any kinetic. Kinetic is always related to motion. And kinetic energy, half of the mass multiplied by velocity square. Uh, square. But this is, I did not put here even the formula, but at least you'll know, 12-12, uh, you'll have more in depth. Half of the mass of this multiplied by velocity square. How about, how about the velocity? The velocity means the speed. It's not moving. Zero. So no kinetic energy. How about potential? Yes. So if I relate myself, the height from here to the ground, there is a distance, correct? And it has a mass. This object has a mass. It's at distance from the from the ground, and it there is gravity, correct? So mass multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the distance or the height is called potential energy. Now, if I let it go, it, it will start moving. So the the uh, potential energy being now converted into what? Into motion, into kinetic energy. So it will go all the way, all the way until it hits the ground, then all the, the, the potential energy totally converted into kinetic, all right? So MGH, let me write for you. So kinetic energy, potential energy here, just um, E bot mass multiplied by the earth gravity multiplied by the height, the height or the distance, the location from the out of the, this object. So the E kinetic half of the mass multiplied by velocity square. Right now, when it hits the ground, kinetic energy is gone because it is at rest. Correct. So then the whole kinetic energy will be zero, and and the potential energy is zero because there is no distance. Correct. The h, the distance is zero. However, now both of them are converted into into what? Into work. So here it is. Kinetic energy is zero. Potential energy is at the maximum. Goes down. Potential energy is decreased. Kinetic energy is taking now place, increasing, 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 until it hits the ground. So the kinetic energy is hitting the ground. Velocity stops zero. The, the height is zero. So whereas the energy, energy does not die. Energy does not die. So this is converted into work. How? Because if I let this one on my foot, I feel the pain, right? The pain is coming from the energy itself. So the pain is converted, I mean, the energy is converted into work. Work, I can feel the pain on my foot. So if you have a rock, let it go, rock at the, the top of the mountain. Kinetic energy is zero because there is it's not moving anywhere. Kinetic means start moving, is throw it. Start moving, moving, moving until it hits the head of somebody. 
then kinetic and the potential is converted into work. And thus you can feel the impact of the work on the head of that person, correct? So now, <coughs> if you look at this, if I, uh, if I have this one here, let me get this one here just to, <clears throat> this is, as you will see, you will you will cover we will cover this one later on. But at least the thermodynamics that's a twelve twelve uh, subject. We have two laws: first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics that's the internal energy of any of any object. Internal energy is made of the heat and work together, combination of both. So if you look at this, let me um. Allow me to get out of sharing and then share the uh, this one here. So this is the first first law of thermodynamic. Uh, I don't think that I will put any question about this. This more or less is 12, 12 more in depth, but at least we we'll know if we will take this one here later on. As we look at the enthalpy. So internal energy U equal Q is the heat multiplied by the work, correct? Now, this is the first law of thermodynamics. The second law, uh, we did not take it, you'll take it in 1212, but at least you'll know if you go for the second law, you will know that the the second law is you cannot produce an engine that works for, for infinite. Time. I mean, it cannot be working. To uh, I mean, forever. So and therefore, it has to stop. It has to come to the end. And therefore, you will see that this predicting even the end of the whole universe. So it looks like the disorder of universe is increasing, increasing, increasing to the point that it will collapse. That's 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 what he said. So if you look at the at the Thermodynamic number two, number two is more or less, here it is. Cannot be just produce an engine or produce anything without consequence and it has to start, it has an end. And uh, therefore even the universe, one day it will end, correct? So that's, that's what it says. So an entropy, that is disorder of the, of, of the, the matter world will increase and never decrease. So always increase the disorder, disorganization of the universe. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, stars, meteoroids, a lot of uh, black holes in, inside the universe. So it's a lot of disorder or organization. It will come to the point, the whole thing will collapse. This is topic you will be taken uh, more in the 12th the world, but at least I give you just the sense of it. I'll stop sharing, I'll share the, yeah, our PowerPoints here. Okay, so, and that's what it says. So here it is, and we have two types of thermal energy or two types of uh, thermochemical reaction, thermal energy or thermochemical reaction. Now, you know that uh, we, we talked about these uh, types of chemical reaction, correct? We have single, double replacement, single replacement. We have decomposition, we have synthesis or combination. We have, um, we have uh, combustion. Then we said we have redox reaction, which is coming out of those, out of those single can be single and uh, combination or synthesis decomposition, and, and uh, all those are redox reactions. Now, there, there are some types of reaction for thermochemical reaction. Thermochemical reaction, you have to specify uh, when you write this thermochemical reaction with its chemical equation, so you have to specify the heat. If the heat is written in the right side of the, of the chemical, react, uh, chemical equation, this is called an exothermic. So, the reaction comes together, but the heat will be given off. 
if the heat's written at the reactant side to the left side, this called what? Endo reaction, endothermochemical reaction. And this is those two here. So, and you can see this, the curve here. Uh, by the way, that was one of the ACS exam long time ago. Give me the, the, the curve and then you have to, um, and then give you multiple choices. So out of this curve, this curve, whenever the product is down, lower than the reactant. So here it is, guys. Just take a pen here. Reactance is lower than the products. You see here, it's lower, correct? This is an exothermic reaction. Energy is, or heat, energy, heat is energy. It's given off, it's given off. So uh, this is an exothermic. So what we have to learn about this? Well, it turns out to be, there are two heats or two energies we have to be concerned of. So one called, this called activation energy, and this called here, the uh, activation energy, this called here, what? Activation, activation energy here. And the distance between reactant and the product energies are called <clears throat> reaction energy, correct? Chemical reaction energy. So chemical reaction energy, the difference between all formation energy or chemical reaction uh, energy. So what means by activation energy? Activation energy is energy needed, correct? Needed by the reaction to let it start. So you cannot start any chemical reaction unless you satisfy the amount of activation energy being present, correct? So now, if you look at this, for example, look at this here. If you, ignite, uh, if you have your car, in your car combustion reaction, you have gasoline and you have oxygen, air. Put them together, nothing will happen. You have to ignite through the spark plugs and put the ignition point of the gasoline so the reaction will come and then you have a combustion reaction of gasoline and, and oxygen and air. Before no, no spark plugs, there will be no reaction. So if you wanna keep your car dead or somebody's car's dead, just pull the spark plugs. The react, the, the, will be, the car cannot move by all means because there's not, no energy to move the car, correct? The distance up and down, it's not coming up and down because there is no energy is driving the, the distance up and down and moving the car forward, correct? So that's the activation energy, energy needed to start a chemical reaction. Without it, so in, in our case, the car case, you need spark blocks. Spark blocks give you ignition sparks, which is, enough energy to, to, uh, <clears throat> to get those, um, to get the, those reaction between gasoline and oxygen in progress. The uh, formation or reaction, um, <clears throat> chemical reaction uh, uh, energy or enthalpies, those are called what, those are the difference between Product minus the reaction. We'll come back and look at them. What's striking is of those, you can see <clears throat> that exothermic has the least activation energy. So what's unique about this, the, um, get this. The activation energy is small in the exothermic. The activation energy in endothermic is very large. Can you see that? The, and the, the, the products minus the reactants, this, this uh, reaction, heat of the rea reaction, uh, heat of the reaction between the, there's a difference between product and reactant. This is still product against minus the reactants. But the unique about those two, the products, is up, here the products is down. Activation energy is very high, activation energy is down. So the activation energy is 
lower. So that's the difference between exothermic and endothermic. So, <clears throat> and um, exothermic is used as an example in, in uh, hot pack and the endothermic in uh, cold pack or ice pack, ice pack and hot pack. So you can use the, you can see an example of those in the real life. So we just take this one here out. Here's an example. If I have the heat, if I have the heat, if I have the heat at the, uh, I have the heat at the product side, then I, I, I'm dealing with exothermic, correct? Right? If I'm dealing with the heat at the left side, this is an endothermic. So another another way we can express this one here, the heat is sometimes is recognized, it is guys, heat is recognized by enthalpy, it's the same thing, heat. This is at the right or negative, negative value, negative value. And here, delta H, heat at the, is positive, correct? This is positive, this is negative. So now you will ask yourself, do we have a negative energy? No. You'll get the Nobel Prize if you get the discovery of a negative. The energy is always positive. There is no negative energy. There is only time that we don't know that we have negative energies when you are dealing with black hole inside the universe. Somewhere is the, we don't know what's happening. It looks like even the mass is converted. So the whole uh, physical law we know, laws we know, maybe inside the black hole, because it's a, uh, what is black hole? Somebody will tell me what's a black hole? In the universe? Well, it turns out black hole, a huge, we don't know if it's star or not star, but the huge hole looks like a black, is like a, like a vacuum, works like a vacuum. Any object, any star, meteoroids, a planet, any object near it will be sucked into, into it. It's like a vacuum, universe of the universe. So whenever this, this huge uh, thing here looks like a big star, huge star. So like it's huge, even bigger than, the, bigger than the, the sun we know. And then anything near near it, it will be sucked into it. What's happened inside this, we don't know. So there is a lot of uh, unknown stuff happening inside. So it's a lot of even the mass is converted and everything and the energy is converted. So do we have a negative energy inside? We don't know, but energy is always positive. We, we put this one here because that's for us. The negative is means given away, losing. So here it is, losing. The system, the chemical reaction, the system is losing. Here is plus gaining. That's the whole idea. Gain. So gaining. So the positive is gaining and the, the, uh, the negative is losing. But energy is always positive. There's no negative energy at all. Okay, so <clears throat> heat, what is heat? Heat, as I told you, heat is energy. And we use the tool to measure this energy or heat by using temperature. So temperature is just a tool used to measure the energy, the heat. Heat is uh, energy. So what is heat? Heat is really energy, correct? So um, the heat is, is measured in metric system in calories. Let me you can see it here. Calories, CAL, small. Our international system, SI, is in joules. And the joule is, one calorie is, you have to memorize this for the final exam. I think they will give it to you, but I'm not sure. One calorie is 4.184 joules. So this is the relationship between um, metric and international system. Now, there is another one. You'll see it in the literature, British Thermal Unit, PTU. This is unique in the uh, United Kingdom. the SI in our textbooks, in ebooks, the SI, all the metric, calories or joules. So 
most of our, our, our heat or energy is coming from the sun. The sun is in charge of our heating our, our galaxy. And our galaxy is called the Milky Way galaxy. It's made of a lot of stars, not only the planets we know, but a lot of stars, meteoroids, called the Milky Way. And if sometimes you can see it very nice on the against the dawn, very dark before before the sunrise. Sometimes you can see those bunch of called the Milky Way. So here is a definition of the uh, Heat uh, capacity, what it is heat capacity? Well, it turns out by definition, we define the heat capacity here, and you can make yourself a flash, um, flash card or a piece of paper to write those formulas because you need those formulas for future quiz. So heat capacity is this, it's equal to heat divided by temperature difference. The temperature difference is T final, you have a system, start with uh, T initial, that's T final, minus T initial, T initial. So you start with starting temperature, you'll end up with final temperature, and that's the difference. So the, the heat divided by, by this, by definition, called uh, heat capacity. Now, the heat capacity can be um, specific or molar. If we add to it, um, if we add to it um, C, Q, divided by mass, delta T, now we, we, we speak about this being now specific. Okay, so now this is specific, as you will see. If we can say C, equal Q, you have to write yourself a formula sheet with the formula. Q divided by N, number of moles, delta T, is a molar heat capacity, specific heat capacity. So we start with this. This is just a normal heat capacity, correct? Write this one here related to the mass, then you speak about specific heat capacity. You divide it by number of moles. This is moles here, guys. This is moles. This is moles here. You divide it by moles. This will be your molar heat capacity. So specific, molar, and just a normal heat capacity, correct? So again, defined by what? Defined by the, the, by, from the formula itself, correct? By the formula itself. So the heat capacity, amount of energy needed, correct? Being absorbed or released, whether it's exothermic or endothermic, for a temperature change of one degree or one Kelvin. So, so amount of energy, so I'm, I'm defining the, uh, the definition from the formula itself. Amount of energy per one degree. Here, Amount of energy is Q, Q here uh, needed to raise the temperature of one gram. This is one gram here. One gram, correct? And then the Q will be one calorie. So uh, amount, the specific heat, Q over mass over delta T. And here this is just number of moles. You define this one here by number of moles. Now, out of this here, this is the, the heat capacity, the specific heat capacity, the molar heat capacity. Those are what? Those are, believe it or not, those are extensive, correct? Extensive means they depend on the amount. So if you increase the amount, the heat capacity will increase. If you decrease the, uh, the amount, the heat capacity will decrease. So they depend on the amount of the matter itself. And here, just an, an example of, if you put 250 compared to 25 grams, you'll see the difference 10 times will increase because you have you have the amount. Now, the some, some physical properties are intensive. 
correct? Such as density, whether you have 250 grams of the material or you have 25 grams of the material, the density of iron will be the same. That's intensive, I-N-T-E-N-S-I-V-E. -E. Extensive, on the other hand, sensitive for the amount. And those physical properties such as volume, correct? Such as heat capacity, those are very extensive, very sensitive to the amount. So they will, their value is changing with the amount. So, now this is what I said, the specific heat, we include the, we include the, the mass, correct? Specific heat capacity, correct? And this is the same thing here. Specific heat is defined amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of a matter one degree. Amount of heat needed to raise the, 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 the amount of one gram, one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. Now we have the molar will come the molar. So if you replace uh, M with N number of moles will be the same thing. Just uh, as you said, if one gram will be one mole to raise the temperature of one mole of the matter, one degree. So, and here just an example, specific heat of 100 grams of aluminum is, is, is about of 10 grams. So here it is. This is the amount here in calories and this amount in joules. Remember one calorie, just, just to make this one here somewhere. So, Four point one eight four joules. Joule is the scientist's name, so we honor we we honor him. Joules, sorry, we honor Joule. So Joules is the yes I S J capital. So Joules. So we just use the J, capital J. <clears throat> so here's an example of some of the uh, heat capacity here, specific heat capacity. And uh, you can see, um, somebody can visualize that heat capacity, just visualizing it without the definition. I mean, uh, C equal Q divided by the mass over delta T. Well, it turns out to be, if you look at the heat, all the heat, heat capacity is the ability of a matter to retain heat. If you, have, if you have a metal, you heat it on your furnace or on your stove and put the metal away, it will cool down quickly or it will take longer time. What do you think? It will cool down quickly, correct? So the specific heat of, of metals, that's the lowest. Always specific heat or heat capacity, whatever you call it, or molar color heat capacity, those are smaller amount. The ability to retain heat for the, for the solids, the metals, solids, is very low. And you can see, can you see this one here, guys? Look at the values here. What is telling us? See here how small this one here, piece of wood. But look at the metals here, the solids. All those are very low. Now, if you go the liquids, they retain heat more. If you go for the gases, even more and more and more. We heat our houses using natural gas, correct? Can we use copper pipes to heat our houses? Can we? No, because copper cannot retain the heat that much. And copper has, I think here, look at this heat capacity here. Very low, 0 0.385, 0 0.385, correct? And this is joule per gram centigrade Celsius. So you cannot heat your house with the copper pipes. You cannot even heat with, with the steam, H2O. You have to have a gas because you can see that's the solid, they, they don't retain the heat. They tend to be cooled down quickly. And the liquid intermediate and the gases, they retain the heat for a longer time. 
And that's because they're, they're, they're atoms all the way spread out all the way the places, correct? Solid is one packed area. So therefore they can give the heat at once because everything is in, in one spot. Okay, so the ability to retain heat is really the heat capacity or specific heat capacity or the molar heat capacity. And you can see the elements and the, especially the solids, they have very low. Liquids, intermediate gases are the highest. So we are heating our places using gases, natural gas, methane, hydropane, any gas that's not toxic, we can use it to heat uh, our houses. So, but not, not, the, uh, not metals. So let's look at this. Here I, I talked about this, the molar, correct? I replaced the M, the mass, with the number of moles is the same thing, correct? Just instead of the one gram of the matter, this is just one mole of the matter. See the definition here? Look at the definition here. One mole, we said, there we said what? One gram of the matter, one degree, here is just one mole, correct? So, and instead of the, uh, uh, the units will be in gram centigrade Celsius, will be mole centigrade Celsius. So, but most of the time in the literature is the heat is, is this one here. This, this is the formula you can pay attention for it. Out of this, I can have two, two um, sub formulas. So what are those sub two formulas? Well, Q, the heat itself is mass, correct? Multiplied by specific heat, multiplied by delta T, final minus initial delta T, correct? And the other one is mass equal to, as you see here, Q divided by C delta T. So out of one formula, I have two sub-formulas I can use. So out of one formula, I can use it for two sub-formulas. And you can see here, one of these sub-formulas is the mass, I can calculate the mass, correct? So here it is. You'll have it in the recording, but at least you know that you have two sub formulas. Now, calculate the mass. It says for, for us, we have to calculate the mass. And the mass is, the mass is here from the sub formula. That's the main formula, that's the main. That's the main. That's the main here. That's the main one. So and this is the sub formula. We need the mass. Well, we need the heat. The heat is given to us in kilojoules, correct? And when its temperature decreases from this to this. So this is the initial. And this is the final, correct? So then you have all this one here, um, kilojoules. So the mass will be, you have to, do, because it's kilo, kilo and you are using gra grams, so it has to be, the kilo has to be transferred into just joules by multiplying it by 1,000. Kilo joules, you multiply this one here by 1,000 to transfer it into joules because you don't need the, um, the, the kilo because your, your specific heat always given, what's the unit specific heat? is joules per gram, per gram here, and centigrade Celsius. So joule per gram centigrade Celsius, or calories per gram centigrade Celsius. So you have to transfer, and that's what we apply here. We multiply this one by 1,000 to convert the, the kilojoules into joules, and then you divide it by the, um, by the delta T, delta T, the difference between them is zero, correct? And this one here is the H2O is one calorie, correct? H2O is a reference and it's a specific heat is 
one calorie per gram centigrade Celsius. And this is equal to 4.184 joules. Right, so this one here, that's the joules here. <clears throat> you divide this one by the joules here is the division. The sign is division. You divide joules and joules cancels out and uh, the, the gram will come up and then centigrade to centigrade it cancels out, correct? So now what do you think about this uh, type of reaction from 83.5 to 13.5? Is this cooling of, of, I mean, cooling the H2O is exothermic or endothermic? What do you think? What do you think? Exo or endo? If it's endo, you are putting temperature and temperature will go high, correct? Because it's, you are gaining heat, correct? So this is going from 83 to lower. So this is exo, correct? So means just by inspecting this, this is an exo process for, for H2O. H2O is losing heat. But if it's endo, you'll end up, you start 83, then you'll end up maybe 90, 95 degrees. So you just gaining the heat. Gain heat, then the delta T will be higher. So, hey guys. Here's another example, heat calculations. C, that's the heat, that's the specific heat, that's the mass. The same thing we did. But here you have to, uh, we are looking for the Q. Remember the, the two formulas we said, the two sub formulas? So Q is mass multiplied by specific heat multiplied by delta T. You plug there, there in, you have to watch for the units. This is kilojoules, so your answer will be in kilojoules. How much heat in kilojoules? So your answer will be, you, whatever you get in joules has been converted into, so it asks you for kilojoules, correct? You have to watch for this. Your answer in joules, because specific heat of, of, of is given to you is calories or joules per gram uh, centigrade Celsius. So you get joules, you divide it by 1000, you get this and you have to watch for what? For the uh, sig fix, you have to watch for the so the temperature is here. You look at this, make a difference out of them. I mean, when you subtract, then you can see that you have three sig fig coming out of the subtract, one digit after the decimal. So it'll be three, three sig figs, and your answer will be three sig figs. Although you started with, with four here, but here the difference between them will be, if you look at this, will be one digit after the decimal, but the whole thing is will be three sig figs coming out of this. The subtraction will be one digit after the decimal, but the whole thing then when you multiply, look at the three sig figs coming out. So you have three sig figs coming out of this. So here is the same thing here. It's asking for the mass. You look at the sub formula we did. You just play with, with this formula here with its two sub formulas back and forth to get the uh, whatever is asked for you. Any question, guys? Any question? Okay, so here's this, uh, the same thing here. So mercury is heated from 25 to 155. Now, what is this, endothermic or exothermic? You are putting heat into the system, correct? Your system is mercury. Your system is made of mercury. Mercury is a, it's a metal, liquid metal. That's the unique stuff about mercury. Is a metal but liquid it comes as a liquid. So this is an endothermic because you are putting heat into the mercury to heat it. So that's an endothermic. So from there you can tell from the temperature you can tell you are from 25 to 155. Correct. That's not even the the uh, the melting uh, point or the or the boiling point of mercury is higher than this. But at least you can tell this is an endothermic process for mercury because you are putting heat into the and absorbs because it's a it's a 
in the Arabic means always you keep the keyword here. Look, whenever you have this um, in um, in your online assignment or in your quiz, the word absorbs means all the time. What? Somebody will tell me. Means an endo endothermic. Means the heat has to be taken in. This is an endothermic. I did not look even at the word endothermic. I looked at the values here, and this is really true. It comes from 25, from smaller to higher, so I put heat. So the heat is absorbed. So this is an endothermic. So you can know it from the numbers. Increase, that you have to put heat into the system. The keyword absorbs means what? Taken in. In order to, to just heat it to 155, Mercury has to take in heat, right? So, and the other the other word here, just just say to the other word is given off. So given off. So whenever you get in the exam or quiz or, or online, this is uh, whoops. This is this is exothermic. This is an exo. Exo. Exothermic. So this is the TQ, uh, the two uh, keywords always used when it comes to heat. Heat absorbed in means endo. Heat is given off. That's an exo. So those are the two keywords I use. So we take this one out and then look at the. Now, give you the mass is given to you. Delta T is given to you. Correct. It's uh, endothermic, but we are not interested in the sign of it. Yes, we are interested specifically to always positive. So don't worry about the negative or positive. It's always positive. Correct. So the mass is there. So what is asked for? Calculate the specific heat. Well, specific heat is Q over M delta T. Q is given to you. Where is it? This is Q. That's your Q here. Correct? That's the mass. Everything is very nice. So mass is here. And this is your delta T. The difference between 155 minus 25. That's your delta T. That's delta T. You just plug in all these values and you get this the whole thing. Now, <laughs> I can ask you, or, or sometimes in the final exam, they can ask you about T final. They will give you everything. They will give you specific heat, correct? They will give you Q. They give you the mass. And then here is the key. Instead of this, T final, correct? Minus T initial. So what they will do for you, they'll give you the T initial, tell you to calculate this. Well, that's doable because this is given, mass is given, Q is given, and the specific heat is given. So you can just solve for the T final. This is always the ACS, one of the favorite questions in the ACS exam. Uh, through the years, even for fourth folks, you give you something like this, and the T final always asks to see the students are aware of, of playing around with with the formula. So this is straightforward, asking for speak specific heat. Here it is, guys. Look at this. Can you see it? It's T final. That's the question here I was talking about. Uh, chloroform is initially at. That's the initial, that's here, that's given to you, correct? That's the initial. What is the final temperature? That's what I, as I say, that's a very favorite question. I mean, through the years. So what is the final temperature? The mass is given to you, it has to be given to you, correct? And the heat is given to you. You have just to convert this one here into kilo means multiply by 1,000 into joules. And then specific heat is given to you. So this one here is given to you, correct? This one is given to you. This one is given to you. 
the mass is given to you and delta t instead of writing delta t you say t final minus t initial look at this this is we convert this one the the heat into 1000 joules divided by this is divided by then you have the masses here the specific it is here this is delta t correct so delta t is t final minus t initial initial is given to you 25 degrees correct so this is the amount here so you add this one here to it so you get the value is this here so, so just watch out for for this type of a question uh, i want to trick the students by just you know it's, you ask yourself where is t final i i don't see it in the formula well it's there in the formula but you have to work it out in the way that you get all delta t and then delta t is t final minus t initial that's what you got here 6.044 degrees then you have to add take it the other side you add it to 25 the answer is 31 uh, degrees um calorimetry calorimetry is a method is a method used to measure the heat or energy so if we have a chemical reactions we can measure the heat of this chemical reaction as i said you have to know how much you uh, you will start with of material and how much you are getting out of this chemical reaction and calorimetry is one of the uh, methods used to determine how much heat you are getting how much what heat you are getting out of chemical reaction so there are um two major types of uh, of color material you don't have to memorize this one will not come in the ACS exam and not come the quiz but even my colleagues said uh, they told me why if we have to add those but at least the students they know there are adiabatic color and reaction color we don't deal with adiabatic that much adiabatic means the heat is not changed adiabatic any any time i say adiabatic there is no change in the heat there is uh, it can be used in the in the no normal life, correct? Somebody will tell me what HIBO means. HIBO means lower. If somebody went to the North Pole and said this this somebody here, this person here, is catching hypothermia. Hypothermia, what means? Temperature of the the body of that person is lower than the body temperature of the human. Temperature uh, of human about thirty seven degrees Celsius or ninety eight. Fahrenheit. So hypothermia means what? Lower than the body, the normal body temperature, lower than 37 centigrade Celsius. So this is hypothermia. If it comes to, to say, okay, so I have uh, I have a project and we have a problem. Um, this problem is causing us to have adiabatic uh, condition. Then the person will know that your system does not change any heat. Does not generate, does not take in, does not give away heat, does not. So those type of, of uh, expression, you have to be aware. So adiabatic, hypo, so all this hype, hyper or per, hyper, hyper what? Higher, hypo, lower, adiabatic, no change. So hyper is, is up, you eat too much sugar, get hyper, correct? So the blood pressure will be very high. So the child is very hyper, so higher blood pressure. Hypothermia, lower. And adiabatic means no change in the heat. Correct? Heat means energy itself. But the most important stuff is this one here. Chemical, uh, this one is very important. That's what um, will bring some, uh, some stuff. Sometimes they bring uh, ACS exam, but not every time, but at least we are dealing with chemical reactions. We put some chemicals inside those calorimeters and we observe the heat change and then we calculate from, from the calorimeter the heat, correct? That's very important. So adiabatic, we don't deal with, with them because there is no change in the heat. We are not uh, interested in them. Some of the adiabatic, and you can see here, um, mixing solutions, dilution, crystallization so there is no change in the heat those adiabatic 
but the chemical uh, uh, chemical reaction parameters there is heat involved so there is a heat involved in this so here just show you a setup of adiabatic uh, calorimeter inside the lab as i said that will not come so at least uh, show you what else we will <clears throat> So the reaction parameters, you don't, as I said, this one here, I should not print. It's not there, but at least there are four types. Correct. Heat flow, heat balance, constant flux, power compensation. Those are the types of parameter you are not dealing with. The most important, however, is this one here. You might be uh, doing some experiment with this four type parameter inside the lab. I have to talk about it. So this is called form cup parameter. This is a very simple parameter. It does provide a very good data. It's not 100%, but within the error, I mean, 10% error, it's not bad. It's acceptable in the lab. So this is a thermometer. So what's happened is you have, a, I mean, a parameter. So you have here, this parameter here made of, this one here is the thermometer to measure the temperature. This is the same like a coffee cup, correct? So this one is mixing. Here is, you mix it. You don't have to do it. Just You can mix it per hand. You can just move it per hand. Here is H2O. H2O, you know, that's H2O here, initial. What is the initial of H2O, correct? Temperature of the temperature. So you have to measure first the initial temperature of H2O you're putting in. You know the amount you have to put in. So density of H2O is 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 one gram per ml. So if you put if you put 10, 10 ml, it's 10 grams. If you put 20 ml, that's 10 grams. That's 20 grams. So the amount, the density of H2O is one, one gram per ml. So whatever is you are putting will be equal to the mass. So now, on the other hand, I have a hot plate somewhere here. So I have a hot plate. I have a hot plate here somewhere. This hot plate. I have a, a beaker. Inside the beaker, I'm heating what? A metal. Here is a metal. Correct? I know the mass of it. So thermometer, put the thermometer inside, another uh, another thermometer. Measure the temperature of the boiling H2O, which is the same temperature of the metal. It's inside. So I know the T initial of the metal. So here what I know inside, I know the, uh, the mass of H2O. It's H2O, and I know it's T initial. I measure this one here for H2O, T initial, correct? Now I set up this one here. After knowing, I take this the metal, after reading the temperature, and quickly I take the lid out and put the metal, the metal is here. Keep it for until temperature, because it's hot, the metal is hot. The H2O is at room temperature, at lab temperature, 25 degrees, for example. So the temperature, because the metal is, is hot, heat always goes one way, from hot to cold. Heat does not go from cold to hot. If you have an ice block here, does it heat the, the room? No. Does it? No. Ice will, will heat the room? No. But Heat, if you have a heater here, it will heat all, all the stuff. So it goes from the room is cold and you have a heater. So the heater will go from hot to whatever. So it's always transfer one way. So, so the metal is heating the H2O a couple of degrees. And then the whole thing will remain constant at temperature called T final. So this is, we get out of this reading here, T final for both system, for the H2O and the metal. They are now in equilibrium, correct? So we keep them 
this is this the lab. I'm not sure if we have it this semester or not, but we are doing it in the past. It's very nice, so you can see how the, the whole thing is. We are measuring the heat of the whole thing. So now we set up the whole thing here. Let me take the whole thing out. Here it is, guys. See here? And now, heat lost by the metal, because we have at the equilibrium, heat of the metal plus heat of the H2O will be zero, because they come to what? Correct? They come to for equilibrium. When you dump a hot metal inside, inside uh, H2O at room temperature, so you come up, the heat is zero, correct? So then what will happen is, you work on this a little bit. So the heat, the heat lost by the metal is gained by what? This is heat lost by the metal. It's gained by, by H2O, correct? You can put the negative is here because I told you Q metal, correct? Plus Q, Q of H2O at equilibrium when, when the whole thing is done, then the heat is zero. There is no heat coming out. Everything at equilibrium, there's no change. So when you put this one here zero, so this one will go out the other side with, with negative. So it will be negative here. So see the negative here come, coming from. So now you plug in all this one here together. Now from the experiment we have, you have the mass of the metal, that's the heat, remember. The heat is Q, Q here, let me see, Q, Q is mass multiplied by specific heat multiplied by delta T, correct? So that's for the metal. So we have here mass of the metal, specific heat of the metal, delta T of the metal equal mass of H2O, which is the same, the density is the same. So whatever the volume you have, the density is one. So the dense, the volume equal the, the mass because the, because the density is one. Multiply specific heat of H2O, which is one calorie or 4.1484 joules, gram per centigrade Celsius, delta T of H2O. Now you have to watch for delta T of H2O is different from delta T of what? of the metal. The only co uh, in common is T final. Delta T is T final minus, we take this one out and let's look at this. So, so here it is, that's the mass. See here. here it is. This is the mass of H2O. This is the specific heat of H2O. The whole idea is to determine the specific heat of the metal. At the end of the lab, I tell you, you have this metal and your, calculate your percentage error, how close you are, your work in the lab. So you have to calculate. This is, this one is always asked. This one's what? Always asked. So specific heat, correct? Then this is the final. I mean, this this is the well. That's the initial. The it came out to H2O was at room temperature 25. When you dump the metal, the metal this is this is this is the final here. Correct. So if you look at this, and this is the final. Whatever is, is uh, I just played with the negative. So don't worry. This is final minus initial. This is the initial here. This is the initial. This is the final. So this is the density. So it's number of grams of H2O, specific heat of H2O, fi a final minus initial. And therefore, you can see this is the initial one. This is the initial of H2O. 
So you calculate it out and the metal is come out to be. So, and you can spec your data correct because a metal, they have very low values. Metals, they have very low. capacity or molar heat capacity or heat capacity by itself, it has always for metals very small number. If you get very large, then you have an error. Your intuition will tell you you have an error somewhere. Correct? So your intuition will tell you because it's a metal, you have to have a smaller value will come out as a result. Inside that's I mean, that's concerned the lab itself. So just here is another example. Give you a H2O, correct? So here you have, instead of the metal, you can mix what? Other liquid with liquid. H2O with HCl, correct? That's heat of solution. Heat of solution or heat of dilution. You're diluting HCl with H2O or solution. Yes. So you have H, um, HCl is uh, 100 ml, and you have 100 grams of H2O, and then the temperature, the initial temperature of it had the HCl temperature of HCl is this, correct? And the H2O initially is this, and the temperature at both of them is, is because of dilution is exothermic, it's raised to. 31, correct? So it started with, uh, I mean, the HCl, the initial temperature of HCl is 46. No, the temperature of HCl is higher. So it went up from 46 to final 32. That's an endothermic reaction in this case, correct? So, so what is this? So for, for H2O, temperature went from 24 to this. This is what indicating is, is energy was absorbed by H2O, correct? Energy is absorbed because you have to put energy, uh, heat, uh, heat to raise the temperature. That's an endothermic. HCl goes all the way up and it decreased. So it has given the temperature, so it will be exothermic. Now, this is very important to the calculation here between both. So the mass of H2O multiplied by specific heat of H2O multiplied by delta T H2O equal to mass of HCl, correct? Or just this, this one here just for H2O, correct? So multiplied by specific heat multiplied by the final mass initial, correct? It says, what is the question? The question is, Calculate how much heat of H2O lost or, or gained, and you get this amount of H2O, correct? This amount of H2O. So you have the, the final is this, so it's positive. So it's the heat is gained, correct? This is positive. So you can see this is 280 80, uh, kilojoules. Correct. So I want you just to be aware of this calculation. Now, here's another trick. Give you the mass, and I need the final. Remember, the final is Tf minus T initial. Correct. So you have given to you the um, joules, right? Absorbed by, what's the key of absorb, the key word? Endo or exo? Endo. If it's given up, that's exo. Absorb means taken in. That's an endo. So the temperature is, what is the final temperature is absorbed by H2O? Uh, 25 degrees. So that's the initial one. I'll give you the initial one, correct? So now plug in the whole thing. This is the joules. Q equal to mass. This is mass of the H2O to 10 grams, 36 fix, multi uh, multiplied by uh, 
specific heat of H2O, one calorie or 4.184 joules per gram centigrade Celsius. Now you have to watch delta T is T final minus T initial, this here. So you have this, correct? So it came out to be 21 degrees, 20.1 uh, degrees. So 25 plus 21 degrees, if you work it out, that would be 45, uh, 45.1 degrees. That's the, the final degrees, correct? Okay, so it looks like you have to put heat. You have to put heat to, to increase the heat of H2 from 25 to 45. That's an endothermic process, endothermic process, because you have to put heat to heat it up. If it's releasing heat, it will be given off, correct? Here it is. Okay, guys. As I said, the 12-12 has more difficult uh, approach than this one here. So we have still five minutes, guys. Cool yourself down now. So a piece of a metal, you have the mass. Let's look at this. You have the mass heated to this and put in H2O initially at, this is the initial temperature of H2O. This is for the metal. Metal is weighing this, was heated to this. That is the temperature uh, initially of it, of the metal. So uh, the metal and uh, H2O were allowed to come to equilibrium temperature, calculate this final temperature. Final temperature is Tf, correct? But you can put it this way, the same thing we did. So mass of the metal is given to you. Specific heat of the metal is given, um, what is, uh, specific, what? If the specific heat, this one is given to you too. This one here is given to you. Delta T, you have to watch. It's T final, the equilibrium one, minus, what's the temperature here? The initial of the element, of uh, the metal, 100 degrees, correct? And here the mass of H2 is given to you. Specific heat of H2 is one, uh, one calorie per gram centigrade Celsius or 4.184 joules per gram centigrade Celsius. And here you have to watch out. There will be your T final. That's where you are working out. Minus the initial of H2O was 30, uh, 23.7, 23, 23.7. So just work it out. Everything is known. So the TF for both sides, work it out and you can, find your temperature final is, is here it is, it's given to you here, is 6.73 centigrade Celsius. Well, here's the same thing. I mean, it's just we have a metal, so we have a metal piece. Then I'll let you, I'll let you go. So uh, this is a metal piece here, correct? of the metal or of the solid, correct? Uh, the whole volume is 100 mils, correct? And the temperature came out to be from this to this. How much heat is generated per gram potassium for this reaction? Assume the density of solution after the reaction is the density of H2O. The heat capacity of the reaction vessel is this one one calorie per gram centigrade or 4.184 joules so this is the same heat specific heat of h2o so you plug in all the stuff here correct now you need just the specific heat of the whole solution correct so mass is given to you specific heat is given to you And assume the total temperature change and how much heat, what to Q. So you just calculate, this is the final, this is the initial, and you get this amount of joules, correct? Now, this joules here, you have to, you have this amount of, of uh, grams, correct? You divide it by the number of grams given to you at the beginning, you get this here. Now, if I need this, this heat per mole, what should I do? What should I, 
as you calculate this heat yield, this amount per, per mole. Come on, guys. What should I do? Transfer the grams here into moles. How I do this? I need to know what the formula of potassium nitrate. This is the formula of potassium nitrate. I need the molar mass. Right? I need the molar mass of this. With the help of the molar mass, I have the mass, I can transfer the grams into moles. Are you following me here? But this one is just give you the uh, joules per grams, and usually is they are joule per mole. So we'll come back, and Wednesday, I hope we'll finish this chapter. It took a lot of time in chapter uh, stoichiometry. That's the most difficult part. And most of our students through the history are missing that chapter in the ACS exam. The most difficult part is the stoichiometry part. So uh, we spend longer time. Uh, get your formulas ready. Look at them. Look how to solve problems. I will see you then this Wednesday and we'll finish that chapter. Chapter is small. It's not big. Spend some time on the other one. So thank you very much.